There's been a lot of buzz about bees, but when we speak about bees, do we really know what we're talking about? Joining us is Dr. Shu Fran here at the Insect Zoo and an entomologist with Oklahoma Cooperative Extension. And Dr. Shu Fran, you're going to talk to us about the differences between uh, mason bees and honeybees. A lot of times we think honeybees are the most important, but there are, are a they? lot. There are a lot of other bees out there. Um, in this, in the United States, there are 4,000 at least different species of bees. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those are solitary bees that are doing a great deal of work where honeybees are a big colony, so they're more interested in their whole group together. Okay. So uh, honeybees are imported, they're not native, and our mason bees and leafcutter bees are all from this area, they're adapted to this area. Um, they work really hard, some, some statistics say twice as hard as honeybees do to pollinate, so they're super important. Okay, so and behind us we have a mason bee home that you've created, an insect hotel, basically. Yeah, definitely. And so what is it um, that is basically the difference in a home with a honeybee versus a mason bee? Sure, when most people think of bees, they think of honeybees. Mm -hmm. So they imagine that bees all live in a big hive together and it's a little square box and you can pull the plates out and right. the whole nine yards. But most bees live by themselves in a single location and they lay their eggs separate from all the other bees around. Okay. So with the mason bee house that we've built here, it's actually not just for mason bees but for any of the little solitary bees. And so we've drilled holes and provided holes of all different shapes and sizes so that bees can pick which hole they want to live in and make their nest cavity for their larvae. Okay. And what's cool about this, what's so amazing about <laughs> bees, is the mama mason bee will pick a hole and she'll go in and she'll clean it out and she will go way to the back and she'll lay an egg and then she'll go get food for it and she'll pack it in around the egg. And what is the food when you... Um, for, some of them are, uh, depending on the solitary bee, some of them are, are predatory and they'll pick up little spiders or okay. little caterpillars okay. and those right. sort of things. Um, they're also, uh, they'll feed on pollen and that's a protein source, so okay. that helps the larva okay. to grow. So they pack that in they pack after that the in, egg. And then they put mud over it so it's like a little cell okay. all by itself. And they do that over and over again until they get to the front and then they seal it off extra good. So one hole could have several eggs in it. Yeah, it could have seven or eight all in a row. Okay. And then once she's got that filled up, she'll go and make more and more holes until she dies. But what's so cool is that instead of the first one that was laid hatching first, right. the last one that was laid hatches first and eats her way out. And then the second one eats her way out. So it's in reverse order from how they were laid in there. Huh. And nobody knows how they can do that. So when we see some of those holes that are covered over, is, are those eggs in there? Yeah, um, those holes that we have drilled are about five inches long. Mm -hmm. So they'll probably hold anywhere from four to eight cells. And right now, all the ones that you can see that are plugged are the ones that have larvae in them that are growing and eating and hopefully will soon emerge. If they look really bright and fresh, uh -huh. that's for sure this year's. Okay. Some of them in, will look kind of dull and sort of caved in. Those are last year's. We even had some that were alive and working in um, late fall, October, November. We were still seeing some of the bees going out. So they go almost all year round. If they fill up all of those, what we can do is go through with a pipe cleaner mm -hmm. and when in the middle of the winter when everything's dead we can clean all those out and they'll start them again. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. We don't have to drill all new holes. We just have to tidy the house and they'll come back. <laughs> Get out some of that yeah. remaining food and mud and things like that. Exactly. And some of the larger holes are for larger species of bees. And then some of the smaller holes would be for the really small sweat bees and tiny bees that you get. We have such a diversity of bees, you just wouldn't believe. If you wanted to build your own insect hotel, what are some factors you want to consider? Great. There are several that you need to keep in mind. 
bees are very picky about which direction they like their holes to open towards. They like to face the holes east. So you want everything facing towards the east and that protects them from the late afternoon sun, gives them morning sun and keeps them cool in the afternoon. They don't like to be down near the ground because oh. those are predators and ants and things that will bother them. So the hotels should be about four feet and up and they can go up as high as you feel comfortable with. And then the size of the hole you want to be from a quarter, a quarter of an inch all the way through to a half inch with every little increment in between. So you have to buy a whole new drill set, <laughs> which makes every man happy. There you go. <laughs> now, what about the plants that are related you know, to the bees? Are they the same sort of pollinator plants you would use for bees across the you know, honeybees and, and solitary sure. bees, or would you use something different? If you're planning to, to make a garden that's going to be happy for bees, that's going to be most attractive, mm -hmm for native bees, then you want to use native plants. Um, a honeybee will pretty much take anything that it likes and it looks good. These guys are more programmed to recognize things that have always been here, that they've sort of grown up with right. over the millennia. Um, and then they're also very good at uh, garden pollination for fruits and vegetables, those sort of things, because most of those flowers are fairly large and nonspecific, so they can get in there and collect the pollen as well as any other bee. And that gives you more fruit, more tomatoes, more squash. Thank you for sharing this information on bees. My pleasure. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.